a, a situation where uh, where they would get the Nyx because they thought EG would maybe not ban Viper instead this time. Because else they could have just banned the Puck, but... They could really... also just be concerned. Like, Universe has played a lot of Nature's Profit already in the competition, and just having to deal with Split when all they want to do is five-man fight. Yeah, this, like, these heroes I, don't I want to five stop man, that. Though. These heroes don't want to five man. <sighs> it's like if you're planning to first pick Nyx, it's very strange to ban Furion. It's like one of the good counters, and then you're even getting Batrider afterwards. So they could have definitely given away a Nature's Prophet. I think both of these heroes are very good against this playstyle. But you know, whatever the reasons may be, this is what we have. Uh, Anti Mage being banned out by EG. A lot of teams seem to just be banning Anti Mage second phase against Infamous. I guess they saw Benja's performance against Secret. Oracle now banned by Infamous to try to give their Batrider a better game. Yeah, taking out that, that quick and simple counter. There's still a couple more inside the pool which can be used. I think uh, Disruptor was the other one which we saw used on day one. Uh, against the Batrider, Kunker's available. Um, where is Miss Vengeful Spirit? <laughs> maybe mm. maybe not going to happen. Uh, not the most popular hero right now, Yeah, to say the least. But it has been picked. Yeah, she, she got through. But 103 heroes picked so far in three days of Dota. Yep. Very big variety of uh, of picks this tournament so far. It's nice to see. I think we're going to get a couple more toward the later stage of the tournament. It's funny when, like, with the games we're casting, everything is very much, very straightforward. The same kind of stuff all the time. Like we're we're seeing the Knicks, the Bat Rider, the Naga. We've seen like come through EG, but Marana, a Shaker. These are very consistent returners to the draft every time. Yeah, I felt like. I don't know, across all of the games we have cast, I feel like we've seen 40 heroes picked. Or yeah. something like that. There's been a lot of the same in these games. But there's obviously so many games going on at the same time with different teams. Uh, and we've cast, I think this is our is this our second set of both Infamous and EG? Uh, yes. It or may even it? be our third of one of them. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It might even be the third for one. It's our third set of Infamous. We yeah, had Infamous cause, on cause day one, and then we just had the series before this one that we cast today was also Infamous. So we started with EGTNC, we had Secret Infamous on day one, and... Yeah, I think you may have had an extra one because you cast a game with Shiva. Yeah, that was, uh, and we had, we that had was L LFY Cloud9. We had LGD Infamous. Yes. As well. So this is actually our third series of Third of infamous, infamous, second EG. Yep. That's... And well, we'll this is refreshing. This is a new pick from EG, at least from games I have watched them in. They're going to play the Phantom Lancer of Ortiz, it looks like. Uh, targeted pick toward the Batrider matchup. He can sustain that lane alone, which allows their supports more freedom to move and get stuff done around the map. Yeah. Infamous with the Dazzle. I wonder if they're planning on a Huskar. You know, Dazzle actually has one of the highest win rates uh, out of all of the heroes at TI. Doesn't so surprise far. me that much. It's yeah. a very solid support. And it's, it's been up there about 75% and... Uh, Sven. Again. Sven. Okay, so safety, safety. That's a lot of armor uh, to play with from from Infamous. Between yep. the Dazzle and Sven. Absolutely. EG do have pretty good hybrid damage, though. Mirana does mixed. Shaker does a lot of magic. Peel has a little bit of a magic element to him. Not the best, but still. Um, I thought, I was wondering if Infamous wanted to go for something like a Dazzle Huskar. We actually haven't seen Huskar picked yet. He's one of the unpicked heroes, which is very surprising to me that nobody has picked that up. They could uh, still do it if they want to. If they want to run like Dazzle Huskar, mid, bat off, Sven safe. Technically, and yes. And then Nyx roars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it'll, it'll get I mean, messy. No, it, it's doable. They could play a Huskar mid, for example. I think it's not too bad, but it's like it's forcing it at this point. And they don't have the last pick either. If they had the 10th pick of the draft, they might go for it, but it yeah. doesn't look to be the case. So how do we round off this infamous lineup? They have decent. They have good catch. They have both Batrider and Nyx to set up fights and find them. They need some sort of team fight, I think, on Tomato's hero. They need um, someone also maneuverable, someone that can keep up with the Bat Rider and the Nyx Assassin. Uh, yep, either good. that, or they can have nice range damage. Uh, the Invoker is still available inside the pool. Storm, or uh, at least synergize with Bat and Nyx. Queen of Pain got banned. I see a couple of options here. If they, if they go for something like Storm, then yep. they have really good catch, and there's no real Storm counters in EG's lineup at the current point in time. They could go that route, for example. Uh, or they could get an Ember, another very mobile hero that is also good against PL later if he goes for the right skill or item build, sorry. Those are two options I could see that would fit Tomato's playstyle. I think they... Mm, it just might not be enough team fight. It's a bit tricky here. They... Puck is actually in the pool still. 
Yeah? And that's a hero Tomato played earlier today, and he actually did pretty well against uh, LGD. That would, that, game. that would finally give him their big AoE control uh, I that think, they're lacking. I think Puck is a pretty good pick here. Quite possibly. And for EG, Universe is the, is the final one from them to fill in. Maybe. Oh, yeah, unless, he, unless he's playing the Earthshaker. He could be. At least still an option. Uh, Infamous Believe is probably Universe. At least they, they cover both bases, right? Like, you ban out the Enchantress, you're banning out either offlane or, or crit. Let's see what it is. It's safety. the Ember Spirit. Okay. So, safety in case they have to go against the Earthshaker in mid. At least he's got something to absorb. Doesn't really have the greatest rotation, however, from his supports to help him out. I think Infamous in this game should just try to play... Secure your Sven. Don't get into this position of the last game where Sven has to lane swap and has to... Uh, he got sacked way too hard last game. That's not how you... Sven doesn't work like that. The hero can't play from very far behind. He needs to get ahead and he needs to farm and get big. Mm -hmm. Play him in the safe lane, give him a good start, and then try to play the Bat and Nyx and Ember together and look for skirmishes while Dazzle and Sven just stack up and greed like crazy. And then Dazzle can try to help count with counter ganks by TPing in with Grave and the heal. And just get off to a better start in the laning stage so they get to actually play the game. Like last game, I felt like Infamous didn't even really get to play. I'm gonna go for a disruptor. Refreshing. We talked about uh, that as a previous counter to the Bat Rider. Yeah. So Crit will end up playing him, and it will be a Samael Urshaker because of this. Yep. Samael loves this matchup. Um, he played it against OP, I think, at the Kiev Major. And destroyed that game. He went, I, I can't remember exactly. It was a pretty close game, and then EG just had two good team fights in a row and just won. Pretty close, and then Samael took uh, a couple of incredible fights on Shaker. I think he really likes this matchup. Generally, Shaker does well against mid melees. I wonder if Infamous are going to try to spice things up a little bit by either sending a secondary or tertiary hero mid. I don't think they can leave Sven alone top, though. So they're a bit locked in that sense. Marana off lane, by the way, for Universe this time around. Okay. That's what they get for putting the Shaker mid, then somebody else obviously has to take that. Get to mix it up a little bit. Well, if you have uh, stuns on your list for Universe, then you'll probably be happy yep. with a 5 second Marana arrow potential stuns. Alright, number of Blink daggers purchased by 25. Who's going to get Blink at that point? Uh, Shaker. Samael. Yeah. Shaker will Sh have one. Shaker and Batrider. Bat Rider. So you potentially have two, but Maybe the question is Naga. if Batrider get enough. Nagas comes later, though. It will be after 25. Do you think so? Are you sure? Yeah. I'm going to say 0 to 2. 0 to 2 is the safer, is the safer bet. Okay. Uh, I'm, it, I'm fine with that. Yeah, Team who places I'm... most Ops Wards, Coin Toss, I'll just do whatever e you don't. EG. Infamous. When will First Blood happen? Uh, I'm going to say 0 to 3 minutes. Okay. Just because it's a male. <laughs> uh, there, there could definitely be a kill in a lane until minute 3. I could see that. And mm. first barracks, 20 to 30 again. But this time it's actually happening. Actually, no, the, the support rotation is going to be too weak. I'm going to say 3 to 6 minutes for first blood. Okay, I'll keep 0 to 3. Then we have yeah. something different. And 20, 20 so. to 30 is still, I think, fine. Yeah, it seems reasonable that that could happen. They, they don't really have great pushes. That's, that's the problem. EG doesn't have great pushes in this game. No. 30 to 40. I'm going to go 30 to 40. I think okay. this game may be able to stretch out a little bit longer. Oh, let's see. Yeah, contest Rune for Rune. As, uh, well, Matthew, Zyg's got to keep running away from this. Universe also backing up. Wow, I'm really surprised he didn't try to stun. They could have stunned into Poison Touch, into Sven stun. They could have maybe killed this Naga, or at least forced out his flask right there. Maybe they're worried about also getting like a cell with an aggressive ability to start with, and not that defensive nature that Ben Jazz can play with. I suppose, but it's still, you know, it, when it comes to these safe lanes, often offense is the best defense. Like you, if you can pressure the opponent away, they're not gonna go on you. So then it's a pseudo heal, right? In a way. Oh, Matthew has smoked up for the courier kill. This is big. Bomb bump, bomb bump. Yeah, he'll get this one. Playing Ricky, even though not Ricky. Nice kill, and he applauds himself. Even Tomato globally, everyone gets to go global for a bit. I can piss the mail off for just a, just a bit because he's trying to get towards his ball, but he already got his salve, and he started with the PMS. Both Samael as well as Tomato are running PMS in Long that lane. lane. Universe taking a bit of a beating here. Tried to go for an arrow, but missed. Big heal bomb could come in here. 
XL was thinking about it. Here comes Matthew. They have another. No, they don't have a stun on Sven. Oh, Zai. He, he needs to regenerate mana. so quickly. Matthew's getting the body blocks off. Zai needs the movement speed. The arrow creates a space with the Riptide. Now it's Matthew who's in trouble. He's sticking around for the fight. And who's going to get it? It's the tower that actually helps Universe get the first blood against Matthew. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, EG gonna be very happy with this getting a, a kill in a two on three situation basically in their lane. And the reason this happened is that Sven didn't have mana. He went for the poor man's shield. He didn't have mango or clarity for safe lane Sven, which is very uncharacteristic. That means he has one stun in the tank in the beginning of the game, and th you just get to pay for that there. Would have been a nice kill for Infamous to start on, but it's gonna go EG's way. They're still ahead, Infamous, because of the courier snipe. It's that so mental Mel effect too, right after game one. Like, I just have to go defense. I need PMS. I need to have the defense. I need to be able to survive. So Mail is laying into Tomato in mid. Yeah. Like, he's just toteming and then just walking towards Tomato. <laughs> that's, that's all it really is. Able to get the last hits, as well as actually burn the salve. And he's doing this all without that bottle. Uh, he's got the bottle sitting in his stash, but he can't bring it out for another uh, like another 10 seconds. Yep. And Artisi's getting free farm up on top. King Tekker is backed off just to farm up the jungle camps. Bottom lane looks like a cell, very low. Zai's gonna hold him there, and Universe just sits there watching and waiting. Two arrow attacks will be enough. Naga Siren, maybe a little bit of trouble, getting double stunned up. Zai rip tidying up as quickly as he possibly can. Down the hill, Universe keeping the damage onto the Nyx Assassin. The arrow, it connects on Sven. And with the double range creeps attacking Matthew, even as the Nyx Assassin doesn't want to commit too heavily in. Not with his Dazzle lost. And this is a lot of farm lost for Sven as well. Oh, King Tekka, he's going for Samael. Sticky Nave Palm, the Searing Chains will hold in there. Samael gets a little bit of space, but he needs to move faster. Some bottle charges might keep him alive. Fairy Fire as well. Back under the tower, King Tekka coming too close. Samael knows he just needs a Fissure Mana. Now he's got it, throws the Fissure, and the attack from the tower reaches out to King Tekka. They were really, really wanting that kill. And this is a classic thing that happens to in a lot of Batrider situations where the enemy target is really low, but you feel like you can't keep fire flying over them, so you try to finish them off with one or two attacks. And Samael was just bottling in between the attacks. I think if you're King Tekka there, you have to commit. You just dive all the way in and try to overtake him with the firefly and then get the kill. And then maybe you die to the tower after, but you know what? That was better than what happened. That was a little bit of a semi-disaster for him. He, it's not only that he dies, but he spent so much time on this rotation away from his top lane and wasn't even successful. So he's level 2 against the level 4 offlane Mirana as his counterpart on the EG side. Alright. EG. Commanding position at the start once more. 4 minutes in, already 1k advantage. Universe is having the time of his life on this offlane, even though his CS isn't that brilliant. Still a two for zero. Zai, Riptide's in. They hit the point blank range arrow. Level one on Starfall, level two on arrow, so Benjaz can just tank through it. A tomato, run away from a hasted Samael. Yeah, well, Samael seems like he... <laughs> Whenever Samael gets a haste, it's go time, man. He's always just diving <laughs> and playing around like that. Well, what was your, your phrase yesterday? I'm sending a message. Like, yeah. He's always sending a message in the mid. He was trying to uh, get toward the courier snipe, perhaps, but didn't find it. Bottom lane, another kill. Was looking at that at all. Underneath the towel. I'm waiting for the mid lane. Exactly. I'm keeping my eyes on that as well. Crit is coming in. He's got. He just put the second point up into. Oh, glimpse. nice. So Samael just controlling up the the Ember Spirit. Nice sleight of fist from Tomato. He dodged the Fissure. That is not. That's not a that easy play. But they they. It's a nice dodge. It didn't end up yielding him a kill, but. Style points, at the very least. Out. Dodges the attack from EG. Like, they really wanted to be able just to... To ha to force him out of the lane, then glimpse him back into the second totem stun. Because that would have been then enough damage for Samal to kill off Tomato. Yeah. Well, bottom lane, Zai has found a way in behind Excel. Yeah, he's looking for Benjaz. I don't think he really wants to have, a, like, a cell. But, okay, Shallow Grave. Able to get off in time, Universe. Again, just waiting it out. There'll be one quick Shadow Wave, but... Universe and Zai timing their attacks perfectly after the immunity wears off. I feel like Infamous are suffering a lot from Sven's mana economy in the bottom. They're gonna go again on mid. Echo slam from Samael, quick slide of fist. Remember, he's still got the glimpse, so even with the jump out, it won't be enough. Pulls back into Samael, and well, 
Tomato, one more attack up the hill. Is it going to miss? It does not. Crit will take his life. Big kill for a Disruptor to get. It means a lot for this hero to get mana boots and just have these successful rotations early on to to get the levels up. He's level four and a half. I just want to flag while all this is going on. Atezi is still farming top uncontested. My King Tech is now coming in to do something about it, but this is a Soul Ring, eight stick charge PL with level three up in Lance. Meanwhile, on the Radiant running. Jungle, Nyx Assassin, double stun for him, but that's not going to stop Universe from get claiming his fifth kill of the game. And they're coming back over for Ben Jazz too. Yep, they could go for an ensnare here, they will. Ensnare into Arrow, it's only going to be a two-second stun. Uh, Riptide's going to remove a little bit of the armor, but he's still, like, even after the Riptide, he's still sitting at, uh, at nine armor. It's just the pressure. I mean, just keep pressuring this guy so that he doesn't have mana and doesn't feel safe, you know? Sven needs to farm. Sven needs to farm and be in control of his lane, and... All of this disruption that they're doing, it's not only giving them kills, but Sven is also very quickly falling far behind Arteezy's PL. That they, by the way, picked the Sven to counter. Yeah. This, this PL is having such a good game in comparison. King Tekken wants to keep fighting this. Matthew's on his way in. There's four sticky napalm charges, but Doppelganger is available. So he starts Doppelganger. Crit will arrive, puts the wall up. Ember Spirit, Tomato committing into the fight. Looks over towards Crit. A quick glimpse will pull him out, but then Spirit jump back up. Crit to the safety of your T1 tower. Five stick charges available. Can Thunder Strike as well. Doesn't have the time. Gets slided down by Tomato, who is in no man's land. Has a TP scroll, but with Samael arriving, he has to wait it off. There's your first stun. Fish up, they get the vision. No, Samael pulled out of it. Now the fissure will connect. Ember Spirit trapped in the trees. Artesia has to doppelganger himself over to cut the trees one, and they get in range of the Ember Spirit, both of which you'll be able to do. So you just traded a support for, what, you're, you're off lane? You're safe, you're, you're safe lane? Yeah. No. This is starting to look a lot like game number one. Same game with different heroes. EGR putting the pressure. They're having the successful rotations. They're winning their lanes very hard. Especially once again, this mid matchup is is very Samael heavy. This looks right now. But this is also, I think, a more favorable lane overall. Shaker versus Ember, I think, favors the Shaker a lot more than the, the Marana versus Weaver we had in the last game. At the same time, it's just this. It's interesting to see the way EG are playing Universe in their games. It's like they've uh, transitioned a little bit away from this. They used to have this style where Universe was more on his own and playing more of these like team fight off laners, such as Void or Enigma, and then with Jungle or, you know, just they're playing a lot around him with Zai, and then Universe is playing these ranged heroes that can actually punish, like Enchantress and Marana. Smail, Fissure. He's on the wrong side of the picture for this one, but Ensnare from Zai will create the space for Samael just to beat the crap out of Tomato. He has the Echo Slam also available to pull him back in. Glimpse into the Totem Stun, Nyx Assassin. He has no level in Spike Carapace because he's level 3. Lasso from Batrider just one by one. Infamous go to their own slaughter. A cell will survive a little bit longer if they got another Sun available. Echo Slam will cancel the TP out for a level 4. Dazzle, Samael doesn't care. He commits in. And this game, it really is one-sided. I don't want to say we're going to get that 10 to 15 minute GG call out, but right now, unless Infamous gets something going their way, they know it's going to be hard. Samael gets the double fissure. Glimpse will pull Tomato away. Another quick spirit up. One charge is expended by Samael. Has a couple of bottle charges up his sleeve too, and Ember Spirit cannot keep the chase going. And so Mel is going to need to be, be a re rewarded here with two runes. He's going to get the illusion rune, use that right away, and he could go for his bounty. He's actually heading back toward mid, though. So, thought he was just going to refill his bottle entirely by getting both runes, but... Maybe he doesn't want to go too far down uh, to the bottom. Of experience mid. Oh, Tomato could look for this play. Yeah, supports nearby, crit as well as Zai. They can just hold him in position. There's your ensnare. More control damage. They've got Glimpse available. So Tomato, he's going to come straight on back and some mail into the waiting arms. Nice jump out. Fish up. Oh, blind. Try crit. I was also flame guard on, so he was going to be fine. Universe is trying to contest the stack that Benjaz is farming. He's just going to throw the arrow out, don't walk into it. In fact, it just connects on one of the creeps. And Universe, four heroes protecting Ben Jazz on this farm. The only upside for Infamous at the moment is the fact that he has very close to it, now after that farming of the stack, a close to net, same net worth as Samael. 
Dragon's Mask Madness will be coming out soon. That's, yeah, like you said, a, a decent upside here, but... They're wrapping for the fight. Yeah. Oh, he got rooted just at the worst possible time. They're just gonna glimpse him back here. Yeah, pull him back in again. Oh, whoa! The arrow is way off target. That was a... <laughs> what a blunder. White ball! White boy! Or foul ball! We're in America, right? So I gotta say foul ball. They glimpsed him back into no kinetic field, a missed fissure, and oh, a missed arrow. Oh, but Tomato's still dead. Now, okay. So. No, no, it's okay. because he's gonna get in stand and Crit has the vision. There's no glimpse. It's still on cooldown for the moment. But there's more and more Arteezy on bottom lane. After this tower goes down, he'll have a 12 minute defusal blade on this Phantom Lancer. And they're just keeping the pressure on the farm up. There we go. EG connects their heroes into a tier 2 tower. Affirmative. King Tech is able to pick up the Blink Dagger. Meanwhile, the infamous side is trying to get rid of a pressure out they can. So Matthew finally finds his level 6 in the top area. He has pulled the dire creep wave down to the neutrals. Very nice play here to keep damage onto the tower while still getting good farm himself. And that will result in the top tower falling here. So at least they get that trade off. EG have no interest in defending this. This is still so much money in the bank of, of EG. And they're coming to the mid tier 1. Universe and Samael. Universe almost feeling like he ran as a mid. And this double defusal blade from EG, it seems to be so punishing. They did the same in game one against Infamous. Like, how do you run from this? You continuously are being purged. It's a very powerful item in this game because it can remove Flame Guard from Ember, and it can prevent the Batrider from running over your lineup. Uh, it can purge off the, what's it called, the Warcraftsmen as well. So, it's a, in a, an unusually high value item in this game. Generally, I wouldn't recommend going for two defusals this early on two heroes, but in this game, it's just, it's really that good. What made it so good in game one they went for it as well? Uh, Arteezy went for it on the Lycan. Yep. Like, and they and they had another one on, um, I don't know. I don't think they had another one. Oh, Arteezy! Oh, nice pick. They waited for that one, the storm from Crit, just a little bit too late. But with the Starfall, the arrow's able to connect, still only a short stun timing, so Tomato. Fantastic kill for them, and then the lasso, Glimpse, and Song of the Siren. Oh, Zai trapping in three, but, but Crit, he at least can ball them. He can ball them and hold them. Echo Slam, some mail, Sun's up on three. Ben Jazz is still there, but they've got the damage, they've got the survivability. Some mail will fall to Ben Jazz, and EG. Getting a little too loose with their plays. They got tempted there. I understand why. That looked like such a good setup for the Echo Slam combo, but Nyx was in a good position to combo break. Samael only got two spells off, not the third. And that meant that those two heroes he got their initial combo on both stayed alive. They turned it around very nicely. This is pretty big stuff from Infamous. They're kind of pulling this game back. They're starting to lose by 7,000 gold minute 11, and now all of a sudden... It's the experience as well. We're down to at. three, and the XP is back up to, back up to it's, zero. It's almost even. And Sven is getting farmed. Sven will be getting his blink in a moment. Mm -hmm. Together with this mask. We might be wrong in the blink prediction then. I was thinking Sven could get one, but I didn't think he would have a good enough game for it. Yeah, I was thinking but exactly the same thing. I thought he would go into Echo Saber, so... There's our second. It does delay up some mails, but we had till 25, right? <laughs> so I think we're we're a little screwed on that one. Sorry, yeah. everyone, we'll let you up the garden path. Is the defusal for Mirana. Crit's able to find King Tekka. Uh, quick glimpse back. We'll pull him back in range of the Phantom Lancer. Charging forward. Have they got the damage output? The answer is yes. I love how Matthew gives them both the get back and the applause at the same time he's dying. <laughs> hey, that's my line. Well, it was all. That's my line. We need to get you to do some play-by-play -play at this TI. So yeah. next TI, we're gonna we're gonna send line. Of course. Oh, actually, your line is good. You, you've got the unbelievable. <laughs> right, I guess so. Yeah, they should have used that. The audio quality of that is not that good, though. I think. Oh, that's um, because it's a Dota TV clip. Never mind. I guess the original is fine. Yeah, um, unbelievable was uh, the uh, the Mushi play, right? Yeah, when, he, when he hid in the tree line. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. That's true, yeah. Uh, you're right. I was, I was, I yeah, right. yeah. P petition to bring in Sins. Unbelievable! Oh, no, not another petition. Oh. 
<laughs> Nyx is in a world, a world of heart. A sentry was down, so even though Vendetta comes off cooldown in two seconds' time, it's not going to help him. So yeah, he'll commit his Vendetta and realize he's still being attacked. Glimpse gets it off in time, back in range of the sentry ward. The Fissure holding him there. You can watch the circle. However, Lasso, her friends have arrived for Infamous. You might be able to keep the Nyx Assassin alive, but more than that, you kill off Samael. Looking for more. Universe, Moonlight Shadows making it easier for EG to fight this one. Storm down as well. Sven trapped inside them. The Song of the Siren. Four heroes waiting for EG. The arrow connects on the Dazzle. No Shallow Grave, no mana. Naga barely surviving the Nyx Impale. Oh, what a but glimpse everyone else is able to TP out apart from Tomato. So M the Spirit will drop. Three heroes lost for Infamous. And every time Samael dies, we actually, no, we already lost. He already bought his Blink Dagger. <laughs> Three. <laughs> I'm like, every time he dies, we get closer to surviving. Yep. Not this time. Not this time. Big fight for EG there. Uh, RTZ getting, I believe, a key kill out of that. He got the kill on the Ember. So it's starting to pull a lot ahead of the Sven again once more. But th that fight could have... Again, shows what Infamous can do if they just combine a little bit better. Like, if Nyx isn't uh, that pressured when the fight begins, uh, it is definitely still within reach for them. And we've got ourselves more of a game than we did in the last game. It's still, th like, the scoreboard looks pretty bad for them with 416, but they're not that far behind relative to the score. Mm -hmm. uh, Samael is going to kill here. He's kind of just waiting. He's, he scanned just to the south to ensure that no one else was around here. Matthew. Oh, <laughs> no. He yeah. waited too long. He body blocked him. <laughs> So that's uh, I, I think he knew he didn't have the damage to kill the Nyx. Like that was his biggest problem. He would have had to start with the Echo Slam on the Creep Wave, but just didn't feel the opportunity was right. Oh, uh, he uh, definitely could have killed him without even using Echo if he used really? all his spells. Oh, okay, this will work. Sentry Ward down. Matthew was watching. Spike Carapace will at least reflect the damage, but Universe holds the stun on Matthew, trying to be that vision for the Bat Rider gank, which was on its way. Well, Sven gets bigger and bigger. Approaching his BKB. Still going to take a little bit of time. That is such a big item in this game. He still has to play around the Naga threat, though. That if he BKBs, he can song into Ensnare. And they can kill off the Sven. They don't have the best heroes to kill the Sven right now. The PL doesn't really want to run into him when he's BKB'd. He's just going to turn around and start cleaving. Yeah. So that's a big item for uh, Infamous. If they can get Benjaz to that BKB, there's the possibility for a big fight. And of when course, you... the threat of him just jumping in and killing the backline. Killing a hero like Disruptor or Naga would be really big to begin the fight for them. Samael's coming down once more, but also once more, Matthew on the hunt. This Observer what's lasted a long time. Seen a hell of a lot of EG's movements. Crit will finally remove it from the hillside. And Asel's already moving back over. Okay, he's gonna... He's gonna sentry board himself looking closer towards the shrine area, but the OBS... Just planted down by EG's further to the right. You can at least get rid of the sentry that's there. Universe is going for a, Universe is going for a BKB of his own. I thought he might have looked for like uh, like Blink Dagger or Aghanim Scepter. Yeah, that's a bit unusual. But I think they're identifying that Infamous can't really do much when they're BKB'd except Sven. Uh, Sven can do a damage. I guess they can get lassoed into Sven, and that's the only real threat. Oh, Asel. He broke the smoke. Oh, oh no. The ulti from crit is just a fraction of a second too late. I thought Samael was going to blink echo that. Yeah. It looked like he was going to, but then he smoke broke, and he started to worry about the Dazzle. Or whoever else was looking at them. Yeah. Ember was still sticking around for like a full second or two afterwards, so I think Samael had the chance. You can't react to an instant blink echo like that. That's, it's more of, it's kind of about luck when you use your slide of fist on the wave and then jump out. And Samael might have thought that if he jumps then, that is the exact moment when Tomato would use the slide of fist. So he held it. Oh, we got trouble for a certain... Uh, someone, maybe. Tomato, it would have been real trouble for him if he walked just a little bit faster. Yeah. Now doing a five second arrow stun from Universe. Where really he was just having a look up the hill. And Jazz quickly out. TP's down towards his Southern Ancients. And more farm to be had down there. This really has slowed up this game now. 
Yeah, and everything's it, leveled up, like experience as well as gold. Everything's starting to flatline. In exactly. In contrast to the last game, this is not a constant gain for EG. It's just a status quo which is being maintained, and that is already a big upgrade for Infamous compared to the previous game. That it's gonna feel like they will have a fighting chance for a long time if EG don't start gaining more than this. The Sven is a is a good pick and a threat in this game. But they can't just ignore. Ember is also starting to gain more and more. Travels and the Veil complete. Oh, this is a big rotation from EG if that's this finds Ben Jess. This is a big kill. He does not have his TP ready. He blinked oh. away though. Wait, hello. Tomato just BT'd onto the catapult. They saw him put the spirit behind, so Samal Echo Slam. The wall is up. The storm is there. And Tomato this time around will die to the gank of EG on bot lane. And he did not hesitate with Echo Slam this time. No. Got the job done. Yeah. This assassin was uh, lucky before that, though. He was able to snipe out the Dark Courier mm -hmm. between the tier 2, tier 3. So, and Matthew, extra money. Matthew was queuing up the Yules, but it looks like he changed his mind and wants to go for a Blink Dagger. Since he's that close to it. Um, hopefully, for. I, or rather, what I'm guessing he's hoping for is being able to blink the backline. I think if he can stun out either the Shaker or the Disruptor, uh, that could set them up a very nice fight where Infamous has like this, this small moment of opportunity to use to find a key pick. Mm -hmm. See if he can pull that off when he gets that blink soon enough. Well, e all the way. EG will give him an opportunity to fight now if Infamous want it. Tier 2 tower is being attacked. Tomato they know. hanging Echo in the trees cooldown. nearby. They got a BKB on Benjaz. It just got completed. Oh, that's a so, really good timing with no with no echo ready. I think Infamous should try to fight this. Uh, right now, they let the tier two tower go down. Fortification is available. Benjaz moves forward. Should reveal the BKB if they're looking for it. A quick smoke on the back lines. Tower is very low. Fortifications there is still EG. Matthew Wait got in spotted the by a sentry. Oh, I saw him behind. The wall is up. The dire sentry ward is there. And Matthew, hit by a short range arrow. Crit still gonna have enough damage before he gets out of range of the detection. And you've lost the tier two tower. <laughs> UFO to Ember Spirit. <laughs> we need more. <laughs> oh, Matthew. That's like the, the, cla the reason that's funny. It's like the classic pub game, you know? It's like somebody runs in in a bad position, gets killed off. We don't have enough words, Work. guys. I don't have any vision. Why, I can't why, farm. Why have you got aggressive vision? Why do we have these hills? He as placed them like himself, even. <laughs> <laughs> he actually placed both of them himself. Like, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> uh, oh, boy. Oh, well. Oh, not the biggest of deals here for Infamous losing uh, losing their Nyx, but they did lose the tower and didn't really get much of a trade-off, so... King Tech has got a little bit of space up on top to farm. Uh, he's got his Blink Force as well as Ogre Club looking towards full BKB. Yep. So, they're getting something out of that. Uh, maybe this is also where EG look at it and go, we don't really have a great high ground unless we kill a lot of people. Like, that's the only way they really get high ground. Yeah. So, in order to get to that position, it's going to take a while. This is giving time for Ember to farm up. Going to have uh, Veil plus Maelstrom probably by the next time the fight begins. So then, Assault Curas is next on his to-do list. So his armor is going to go through the roof to a team that, once their magical oh, damage Ma is gone, Matthew physical won't be so the, great. Just barely walked into the range of the tower here. He's hoping for a courier. I think he's hoping to maybe go and sneak in a ward, but that is not going to happen. Would have been a great time to snipe the courier as well. Oh, it's oh wait, no, he's got the gem of true sight. He's got the gem oh, of... Oh, that if, would if, be so big. Oh, he, his vendetta expired. Okay. The Radiant Observer Wall can see it. Yeah, he's ping and he's like, I, I see the gem of True Sight coming out in the Courier. He can Vendetta again in 18 seconds, or he can just try and walk over, but it's daytime. The Dire Side have vision. I mean, they're sending it back closer. Oh, he's got to go for it. It's There's so... No way. He can't do this. It's so close. He can't kill it. Now he's... Oh, my God. Oh, and some male just found him. Found him in the trees. He managed to hit him first. That's a double damage Earthshaker. I think he still knows where he is. There's and yep, it's the gem of True Sight doing the work. <laughs> the thing he wants like to kill guy. and get out. I like this guy. <laughs> I applaud. I need wars I just fed. Yay! Screwed up completely. <laughs> Applause. Oh, well, it's space created at the very least. You know, it's time for his team to get the farm on the side lanes. 
But now EG will be looking for an aggressive movement here with their smoke of deceit. Trying to wrap around fully onto the Sven. Oh, Ember just went down oh, to the no. spirit, which is right in the middle of the EG lineup! Get oh, me out. <laughs> mercy! Oh. They scouted it as they were walking past. They started the TP. Like, they were happy to leave. They didn't want to fight oh, that. Bat Rider, wait, what? there on Batrider as he four-staffed himself in to get the lasso, but had no mana left. It all got burnt off before he could get back out. I think he just misplayed. I think he didn't want to force in. I think he misclicked or uh, wasn't turned the way he wanted to be. I think he just wanted to get the Firefly on the ground and then get backwards and force staff in and just misclicked. Unless Unfortunate. That's a pretty big kill. He's down for 30. This could be a tower. And they needed his... Uh... <laughs> okay, yeah, he's wrecked himself. But EG... Well, I thought it was going to be 30 minutes. Unless they can delay it. Here comes Ven. Stormbolt. Oh, that's easy. Quick on the doppelganger. Some mail throws down the Echo Slams. Ven out of mana, but now with the BKB can get isolated. Samael was qu quickly dying. He's Take locked inside the ensnare. At least he can push it back out. The weave connects on the EG players. So they want to bail Tomato. Spirit forward. Doesn't see anything at the moment. In fact, now they can turn the arrow from Universe. It hits onto Tomato. Her shaker is low, but Samael still survives. Quick reaction from Arteezy was very important there. Getting the doppelganger off before he got Sven stunned. Else, I think Sven could have actually killed him before he got out of the stun almost. This, this, this Ben Jess Sven is hitting really hard, but they're playing around it nicely there with the Song of the Siren, the Ensnare, and they're just like, okay, we actually can't kill this guy five on one, so we're just gonna back off. And yeah, reset, get the kill on Ember. Fortunately for them, he overextended a little bit. Go back to chilling and farming again. Damage output's gonna come a little bit quicker from this Ven. He uh, bought up his Hyperstone and it's still, still trying to finish up the AC, but you're right, he does hit like a truck. He has really good attack speed. No. The Hyperstone and Mask of Madness. It's, that's, that's the thing you're just waiting for for Infamous, is any good connection. Just any good connection where Sven can hit for two seconds, blood will be spilled. But they're just not finding it. Mm -hmm. King Tech had just tried to find it on top lane. Four start himself, Finn was looking for the blink onto crit. Couldn't get close enough. Excel snatched the rune. It'll be a matter of time before uh, EG thinking about going in for Roshan. Song of the Siren comes back up again. They've got a lot of stuns and a lot of damage to pump out. Even just Samael. Samael alone controls up Roshan. Crit oh, and Matthew. Samael are going to work together. They're looking for Matthew in the trees. Being pinged out, Samael will run up. Oh, there's the scan. They don't have that. Samael's on the wrong side. They knew. They they thought he was in the trees, and the scan was looking for it. Uh, the scan was also red, so they knew that somebody was there. But he yeah. ran the opposite way of what they thought he did. So Matthew wasting their time a little bit there. Might actually get some valuable information now if he runs downward to find the Naga. But he's running upward, hoping for a little bit of a courier snipe here. There's nothing else to do. He has no ward. <laughs> Ben Jazz is going to have the AC and 100 gold. Make that 50 gold. He's going to sell a spawn blade. Maybe. As you could. Oh, he's going to kill a Nagelu. And then the mid wave. That'll work. They don't want to, they don't want to fight at the tier 2 tower anyway. Infamous have no idea what the vision game is right now of evil geniuses. So the easiest thing to do is just fight in the safest place on the map. And that's inside their base. And EG aren't going to oblige. RTC just TP to the tier 2 tower on bottom lane. He's going to push that back out again. And EG continue their farm game. Extend their already lo like large lead of 11,000. And push it further. Do Infamous have a smoke on them? There's a gem on Nyx. They don't seem to have a smoke. So I don't know how many they have left, but... Now would be, I think would be a pretty good time to try to look for a fight. They have to feel like EG are controlling the map better than they are. Like, they're definitely getting out farmed, it's very clear. And they're not going to hit a sweeter timing than... Oh, they're getting the bat BKB. Okay, he's three gold away. Yep. Bat BKB, Sven AC, it's go time. Like, the, this is the biggest spike they're going to have for the rest of the game, unless they find a good fight now. So... Gotta get something done here. Benjes is very strong still. It wouldn't take that much just to beat the T1 tower down. And it's not something which EG will probably want to defend. But they're hunting for more. So the catapult's beating the tower in. Okay, Benjaz will commit in. May as well fortify. 
going to come back off cooldown anyway, so... He currently has 60 armor. Yeah, good luck. Yeah. On such a low cooldown for Warcry. Yeah. Now Weave expires. Now there's a bit more of a moment of opportunity, but Aegir just... Not willing to try and defend this tower. I think it's a fine decision here. It could have been tricky for them. To take it easy. It's like Crit's also waiting for that... Uh, he's, he's trying to get as much space as possible to build up the Aghanim Scepter. So then these BKBs are not going to help him. They'll always have to be used defensively. Uh, another big item on the way here for Naga. Very close to the Solar Crest. Has the mech completed as well. Oh, Crit. Crit's going to... Uh, yeah, they're looking for King Tekka. BKB. Oh, that's a 10 second escaping BKB for the Batrider. Not exactly the way he, f he first wanted to use that, but now the BKB is down. The ping comes from EG, they want to go for Roshan. Yeah, they should be able to get this if the don't connect together fast enough. That's the benefit EG have with their aggressive warding on the left hand side and with their wave clear that they're constantly taking care of is that Infamous are splitting up just a little bit, and that gives EG the jump that allows them to enforce the, the play that they want on the map. So here goes Roche. Not easy, he's going to be the man to grab the Aegis the Immortal. Evil Geniuses. Time to go for mid. Tier 3 towers down to 263. Wouldn't be that difficult to, to bring it down the rest of the way. Matthew is still looking for a nice snipe. <laughs> At least Infamous is having fun with him. I swear Matthew's just sitting here looking to pick off, like, some wonderful item that someone's bought with the money they killed Roshan off with. But the only person who could be doing that soon is Crit. He's now a thousand gold away from having his Aghanim Scepter. This actually is what Matthew's doing. Like, he's, he can't do anything else. He's on courier duty. Yeah. Intercept the Raven. If nothing is happening and they're not looking to fight, this is the best thing he can do on the map, probably. It's just... I, I don't I don't really like this choice from Infamous of just accepting this this control from EG and not trying to make their own moves. Like if, if this is where Nyx is scouting, the opportunities aren't going to arise if you have him scouting that far back, because Aegis heroes are not going to be here. And you're not smoking over either. Maybe they're out of smokes, I'm not sure. Maybe they're also just happy to continue their farm. Like, like ben, Jazz is, ben Jazz is getting closer towards his MKB so he can finally deal with the butterfly that's on Arteezy. And it should only take one really good fight for Infamous to just destroy EG. Exactly, but that's what you that's what you feel like, right? But if they're not looking for it, I think that fight is getting harder and harder to find. Uh, EG are getting more and more farms, so the, the conditions to get a good fight are more and more difficult to meet. When it goes like this, oh, the courier's flying out. I don't think Matthew can see this one, though. It's hard for me to disagree with you, man. And, I, and I'm and i looking at, like, Tomato's build as well. <laughs> Tomato has nothing. He's He's got Radiance in quick buy. He can, yeah, well, he can't really go farm. It's it's just, it's really difficult. The couple of times he's trying to go and find farm, he's getting killed off by these... I'm just surprised he doesn't do something like a Bellstrom instead. Like, I could I see seem, that being It seems a lot more affordable. And it's what he was looking at to start with. Now he's just trying to, like... Radiance, maybe is the miss oh, Echo bottom. Oh, they found their target. It's going to be King Tekka. BKB wants to survive and now blink in with a stun. Looking for that cleave damage, but Benjaz rooted up and trying to find, but he only has the Kree wave. He cannot see EG. SL will give him a little bit extra weave damage, uh, weave life, and then walks into the middle of Evil Genius as the Glimpse is still dragging back the Sven, unprotected by his BKB. Arteezy will get a mega kill streak, and Ben Jazz will die. Nothing will stop this. He has buyback available, and he will use it. EG have the choice now. Do they go in further? The DD of Universe is going to start wearing off. And it's a double stun, but Ben Jazz is locked out by Fisher. He can't get. Oh no! He spirited out into the middle of the Song of the Siren! The wall was perfect! Sven's now looking for his own cleave, but instead, Arrow controlled. No one from Infamous can come and help him apart from Ben, uh, from, from King Tekka. But that doesn't really help out either. There was too much damage from the PL on the back lines. Finally, the cleave brings down Universe, brings down Samael, but Artizi is a beast! looking to murder everybody and had that Aegis Immortal trigger on him. Have they got someone else? Yeah, there's your glimpse. Tomato tries to slide a fist off instead. And EG, they're backing up slightly. And then Arteezy back into the mix, still with Aegis the Immortal available. He's, 
I don't I don't know what to say. This is almost surreal to watch what is happening here. Like the the first move bottom where the Batrider gets caught out, uses BKB and tries to force Steph away and just barely dies. They're running in the Sven alone. He blinks in, tries to fight one on four. In the meantime, there's an Ember top lane with Boots of Travel ready, not joining. And there's a Nyx with a TP bot in the top area waiting for the Courier, also not joining. It's like they're they're not at all working toward the same goal here. It's just individualistic plays instead of teamwork. It's a bit sad to see because I, I honestly think their lineup, like when you see when they put these little scraps together and they almost got a decent fight there, this lane, this game is definitely not unwinnable for them, but they're playing like a team that doesn't, that feels completely completely lost like they're playing like they've lost yeah that's, that's what it looks like to me but they actually do have the tools if they do a really good job and it, it's it's a bit of a shame i would just like to see this fight where infamous come together land their spells and do their best and maybe they lose that fight but you gotta try and this this was so scrappy and so all over the place without without any coordination that it's it's just not it, yeah they're definitely not gonna win like this that's no. that's for sure they have to they have to play play as a unit at the same time, though, it seems like I don't think EG would have ever gone for that high ground push after the buybacks came out from Infamous if it was any other team than Infamous. Like, I think Possibly, they also had that, that confidence in themselves they could just win this. But the whole that whole situation shouldn't even have arisen in the first place. I mean, it's one thing Batrider gets caught out. Your Bat gets caught out, okay, you know? Like, Bat is out of position, gets caught, that's it. He could, He's dead, that's it. But then Sven just jumps in with no team, with no team behind him. You know, they're making the fight exceptionally hard on, uh, for themselves, and then getting punished like three times as hard as they needed to. And Disruptor is like, Chris just spent all of his money. He bought a fresh gem for Samal that was lost in the last fight by EG, so it's in the hands of the Bat Rider at the moment. Uh, and he's just got his Aghanim Scepter oh, onto Disruptor. That's a big item. Now they can song and kill Sven. Yep. That is really big. That's the that's the tool they were lacking to make these fights easy. Oh, <laughs> Arteezy just charging forward, doppelgangers to break the trees, all he's got to do is follow the fire. The BKB is up, but King Tagger does he have enough life to the survive? Wow. Yeah. This PL is really big. Yeah. They almost got the gem again. In fact, I just realized they've got two gems of true sight. King Tech is holding onto some and they got another one sitting at base. So there's three gems on the field at the moment, the other one's in the hands, or was in the hands of Disruptor. It's now in Samael's hands again. All right, here comes EG. They want bottom lane. Yeah, Infamous have to get back here. This is this is the kind of fight where Infamous get the chance of setting up their their fighting condition. You know, if, if EG are pushing high ground, it's a lot easier to combine. The problem is there's the Axe on Disruptor. If that's the one thing they're gonna really struggle to play around. Well, Arteezy, even without the Aegis, the Immortal is happy to beat into the tier three tower and be the front liner. No one from Infamous is coming forward, yet it's just the illusions of Arteezy being sent into the back lines, making it difficult to blink further forward. Now the Weave. Oh, it only really hits on Mirana. I suppose Arteezy did get clipped by it as well. And the Naga. That's three heroes, not okay. too bad. Oh, there goes Tier 3 Tower. EG. Still waiting for the right opportunity, letting illusions do the work. Not any of the any of the core heroes. <laughs> ben Jazz. They're spending so much time running away from Arteezy. And not the real one. Now, Blink Lasso, nice target. Catching out Universe. He'll bring him down. Ben Jazz under the cover of his BKB. And with the power of God's strength, Mops well, on the way. And here. now, Song of the Siren. Three trapped up. Five affected by the Song of the Siren. But the Wall and Storm. Actually, Estel gets out until he gets Glint back in. And the Echo Slam. It's layer on layer on layer of pure beautifulness from EG that will allow them to take the game and the series 2-0 much Fine. needed points to secure that upper bracket position i beat you by one prediction ha <laughs> well done cinder and you got the you got the barracks right though yeah you, we it. almost missed it both of us that was a really late barracks for uh b based on how game one went and also how the flow of this game was but eg played it nice and safe and eventually got it out eg are looking very good for sure uh, two very convincing wins here. There was a little bit of a hiccup here or there for them, but overall just dominant and clearly a tier above the, the Infamous team today, at least. Yeah, it Which... definitely shows uh, the experience that Infamous is still lacking and needs to needs to yeah. find. But uh, they have a little bit of time to find it and try and hold on to their position in the groups they are. Now are being pushed down to the bottom run and potentially elimination game they in their group. They are 3-9. 
and Fnatic is 1 and 9. I believe they're in the same group. Yes. And then Eagles are now up. Oh, in a very good position to get that top 4 spot, which is the most important thing for them. They just want to start in the winner's bracket if possible. Uh, secondary, obviously, to them is what placement they get, so they can maybe get a slightly easier or better opponent for themselves. But for now, on the right track, Maybe a bit unusual for EG. They're doing a yep. good job in groups. Holy Refreshing. Hannah! Oh, that means they're out in the first round. Uh, <laughs> yeah, knows, coming, might be. coming into the playoffs. The reverse of what we usually see. <laughs> yeah, good, good, good luck all EG fans. They're looking good, that's yep. for sure. Now they are. We'll be back to see another team that's looking good. Newbie will be next on the list as they will be playing up against a team who has been having a horrendous time. Hellraisers is up against Newbie. 